Hello people, how y'all doing? Right off the bat, this video contains third party information. But due to the nature of this video being for educational and informational purpose only, it is exempt from any potential copyright infringement strike. With that being said and out of the way, I'm looking through the YouTube library here the other day to uh, find something educational to watch or something entertaining, but the library has become so redundant that it's hard to find anything new. And all of a sudden this video here pops up into my feed and it's about angular velocity here. And I'm thinking to myself, you know, that might be something educational i might be able to learn something from it it's from mission control i'm not thinking much of it i've never heard of mission control but as soon as i click on it this is what i see and i'm thinking to myself oh jesus it's a sphere idiot video oh well i've already i haven't watched one in months because <laughs> it's kind of like the last thing on it, it, it don't even make my bucket list I have no desire to watch stupidity anymore. But anyway, I already gave him the, the watch, the view count. So I decided to go ahead and watch it. And uh, without further ado, let's go ahead and watch it. We got a double banger here, folks. The Wolf Pack. Hi, and welcome to another episode of Mission Control. The Flat Earth Belief Chrome Dome. is based on so many misconceptions that it would make a flying elephant seem more plausible. One of the elephants in the room is angular velocity, and by definition, flat earthers just lose their peanuts when they have to deal with this subject. So, once again, let's try to hammer this home for the very last time. We're going to use the flat earth as a carousel and place some objects on it. I've set the radius of the disk to 6,400 kilometers. The objects are placed at half the radius. Let's spin the disk 10 RPMs, which is the same as 60 degrees per second. As expected, the objects are flung off the disk because of the centrifugal force. So, how much acceleration are they subjected to? Flat Earth, don't move, idiot. Be your man. The angular velocity is 2 pi over 6 seconds. The linear velocity is then omega times the radius. This results in an acceleration of 3.5. Who did your math? Because you sure in the hell didn't do it. 5,000 meters per second squared. That's a lot. No wonder why these objects are flung off. Let's see what happens if we slow the rotation down by 50%. Uh, there will be the animation once more, but this time we rotate the disc by 15 degrees per hour. Pretty slow, huh? You can't see the rotation? Enough of that video. Now, I left this guy a comment, and we went back and forth with comments. Here's my comment. I'll get back to that in a minute. But we went back and forth, and I tell him, I say, I need more content for another sphere idiot video and we go back and forth with our comments and back and forth with our comments and down here he said thanks i already have enough material now to do a video about you be sure to watch it tomorrow and anyway so i start making a reply to him uh at that same time this this time is wrong this happened a couple days ago but this uh, video page has been open so anyway I start making a reply and I'm doing some uh, calculations in my snip and sketch here and doing the reply at the same time here and then I get a power outage for about six hours and I didn't save any of this recording or any of my data here. None, none of these snip and sketches were saved. So I, and it's on my very low on my bucket list to do. And for the last couple days now, this idiot here has been leaving me comments if you haven't seen it the video i promised 
is up now. He posted this comment to me about four hours after the video was up. So all of his goons could already have watched it and give him their thumbs up and he loved all their comments and whatnot. And I tell him after work. And then he comes back and he, a few hours later, and he says, how's your calculation coming? It's it, Dude, you are so far down on my bucket list, I don't give a fuck what you have to say or what you've done. Then he comes back the next day and he says, you have become awfully quiet. Are you working in the calculation? It's on the calculation, you dome head. Or did I manage to make you see your mistake? I didn't make a mistake, dude. You did. You made a total fucking ass out of yourself. And I will explain that as this video goes forth. Anyway, it, uh, like I said, it's so far down on my things to do list it doesn't even make my bucket list but today I wake up and he goes I guess us spheroidiots aren't so stupid after all anyway thanks for spewing your nonsense it made for a great video I recommend you also watch my latest video observable demonstrable repeatable there's an easy experiment you can do for yourself if you dare. Well, the only reason I was even coming over here was to find cuz I didn't want to I didn't want to lose the comment. I've been working on that comment and I didn't want to lose it. And you know how YouTube will have a tendency if you click on your bell notice to eliminate your comment or do whatever the hell they want to do, the Nazi sons of bitches anyway. So I came over to this video here, and I see these comments here, and so I decided to watch his comment, his uh, reply on video about me, and so let's have a little go at it here. I don't usually engage in long discussions with flat earthers because after a few arguments back and forth, it becomes clear that the debate is no longer equivalent. Three so this guy thinks he's some intelligent brain. He's reading a script, you can tell. I got him on 1.7 times speed, just so it ain't so boring to watch right there, you can see. And you can, it sounds like a viable conversation he might be doing, but you watch his eyes, he's reading a script. I'm freehanding. Things usually happen. They either resort to word salad or they dismiss. Word salad? It's all logic, or they simply just tell a lie. A lie? This can, this a lie, dude? You got a lot of room to talk here, and I'll show you. I'll show you. Go, because this, this poor, poor excuse, excuse for a human decided to actually... Poor excuse for a human, huh? You Richard Cranium look-alike. He throws some numbers at me. That's when numbers at you, and it went Across the safety line for flat earthers. Safety line? You can't even math, dude. And I'm going to prove that to you. You guys just continue to follow along here. So, let's, let's have a look at flat earth intelligence at its best. Flat earth intelligence at its best. This guy under the name in red was not happy with my angular velocity. It's not that I wasn't ha happy with it, dude. I wasn't angry. I don't care about your video. It just proved your stupidity. It's a video. I'm not going to bother with his initial statements because, frankly... He's not going to bother with my initial statements because, frankly, why? I just can't follow his word salad. You can't but follow the word salad? Really? Let's go ahead and have a look at these initial comments. I say to him, I say, take your angular velocity with you to the center axis of a 3,963 mile radius disk placed, in, placed inside of a ring with an inside radius of 3,963 miles and one foot for clearance. Okay, start rotating the disk up to an angular velocity of 15 degrees per hour, which equals 100. 1039 miles an hour at the rim of the disc while holding the ring stationary. Now start migrating towards the edge. When you get to the edge with your angular velocity in your head, step off the angular velocity of 15 degrees per hour onto the stationary ring. 
I laugh out loud at his stupid ass. You will never make it to the edge as a centrifugal force at just 300 miles out will throw your ass off the 3,963 mile radius disc only rotating 15 degrees per hour. It's called rim velocity for a reason. And he said he couldn't understand my word salad but he went ahead and he replied to me this replies like five minutes after I put that one up and he writes faulty reasoning I guess you didn't bother to watch the video and I replied to him mission control if it is so faulty you would have no problem doing it and about 20 minutes went by and he didn't reply to me. So I replied to him again. Mission control. Faulty reasoning does not fly without an explanation. I guess you didn't watch the video isn't an explanation. Or is that the best you can do? Okay, reverse the roles. Place a... 3,963 mile radius disc rotating only 15 degrees per hour inside of a stationary 3,963 mile one foot radius inside diameter ring. You are standing on the ring. Remember the disc is only rotating 15 degrees per hour. Not very fast, huh? So it will be a cinch for you to step from the stationary ring onto the rotating disc just 15 miles per hour, right? Answer, fuck no, because the rotation is just 15 miles per hour does not change the fact, the rim velocity of that 3,963 mile radius disc is 1,039 miles per hour. Go ahead, attempt to explain the fault in my reasoning. I need more content for another Sphere Idiot comment video. And this is a banger, folks. This is uh, Wolf Pack's one of their top dogs. So this comment here, it is extra good. And yes, I watched you display your foolishness three times talking about his video because he said I didn't watch it. Just to be sure, my comment was indisputable. Your mathematical formulas do not mean shit in a side-by-side -side comparison to what is an observable, repeatable, measurable, recordable, and verifiable fact. And then he comes back again to my word salad. And he says, in REM, what you need to study is conservation of momentum. Look, you Richard Cranium look-alike idiot. What the heck does conservation of momentum have to do with angular velocity? I'll regress. You keep talking about standing on a stationary ring and then suddenly step onto a rotating disc. That is not what we do here on Earth. Everything on Earth has momentum, even the atmosphere. We don't just suddenly pop into existence with an absolute zero velocity. You are totally obsessed with linear speed which is completely unimportant. I don't think you have the ability to grasp this, but at least you have my thorough explanation now, and it is up to you whether you can advance from your insufficient academic skills. I reply to him, Excuse me, Mr. Genius. Do you have reading comprehension deficiencies? You say, I keep talking about standing on a stationary ring, then suddenly step 
onto a rotating disc. I do not keep talking about standing on a rotating or a stationary ring and stepping on a rotating disc. In fact, what I described were two completely opposite scenarios. One stepping off the rotating disc onto the stationary ring, the other stepping off the stationary ring onto the rotating disc. I only use those mentally observable factual examples because all you spheroidians claim it's just 15 miles per hour when in fact it is not just 15 miles degrees per hour, excuse me, it is also 100 or 1039 miles per hour at the supposed equatorial rim fact no matter what you claim or attempt to explain away rim velocity linear speed has absolutely everything to do with angular velocity they run hand in hand last time I checked it was still impossible to have one without the other how can one baller be so lame? You fail to explain why rim velocity, linear momentum, is unimportant. In that same breath of air, you inject another impossibility, an atmosphere that has momentum without citing any proof whatsoever. I hate to be the bearer of bad news, bud, but because you said so, doesn't cut the mustard. Let's go back here to now and get into this. This lying piece of shit right here. After I asked this question, he took the bait, and that's when the fun began. Imagine a jet fighter flying 1,036 miles per hour. Excuse me, you dyslexic motherfucker. That's your own comment. It's 1,039 miles per hour. In a straight line. I think we can agree that he feels neither speed nor direction. Now he's dipping his nose 15 degrees per hour. That's 0 0.004 degrees every second. You want to convince me that he feels that dip? And he answers. I'm not here to convince you of anything. I am, however, pretty damn sure you would feel a 199 foot per second drop. If you were not strapped down, you would hit the canopy. I asked him how the hell he came up with that number. Is that what you asked me, you lying piece of shit? Let's see what you asked me. Right here. Imagine a jet fighter flying 1,039 miles an hour in a straight line. I think we can agree that he doesn't feel neither speed nor direction. Now he's dipping his nose 15 degrees per hour. That's 0 0.004 degrees every second. You want to convince me that he feels that dip? I reply to him, Mission Control, I'm not here to convince you of anything. I am, however, pretty damn sure you would feel a 1,099.91 foot drop per second. If you were not strapped down, you would hit the canopy. Mission Control, how the hell did I come up with that answer? That's what you claim on your video? You reply to me, in RAM, 199 foot drop per second. How the fuck do you come up with a number like that? Now here's where it gets good. He eliminates all this stuff. He don't want to talk about this. Yes, I reply to him. Mission control, yes, 199 foot per second drop. How? By applying basic math using Earth's radius of 3,963 miles as the base. Had I added the extra flight elevation of 7.6 miles, it would have been more footage drop per second. You are the math the magical wizard. You should be able to tell me why I'm incorrect. What is correct and how you cl calculated the correct footage drop per second rather than question how the fuck I computed for the curvature drop per second. And you reply you stupid double dumb bastard. I don't think you have the capability to wipe your ass if your fucking underpanties were 
toilet paper. He replies to me at NREM, the plane is flying 464 meters per second. The dip is 0 0.004 degrees per second. The drop amounts to R radius times COS parentheses 1 minus 0.0042 divided by 2 equals 0 0.0042 meters. So, point, or 4.2 centimeters per second. Well, zero zero four two meters is point four two centimeters. Any idiot knows that. The drop is fifteen meters per minute. I don't think so. The drop is fifty four kilometers per hour. The drop is sixty three hundred seventy one kilometers per twelve hours. Also, one radius of Earth. You already, I already know you don't get this, so I will ask you right away what you think the dip is after 12 hours. To which he replied, by using basic math. Great, I thought to myself, then even I have a chance to follow along. Now, is that what I said, basic math? No, I asked him. Remember, right here. I told him he should be able to figure out. So he comes back with this statement here. And then he also says, and for good measures, at NRAM, he says, and for good measures, I just want to say that airplanes don't dip their noses to travel Earth. That was purely an example given to illustrate that there is close to zero change in direction with is why you don't feel the 1,039 miles per hour. And I replied to him, Mission Control, you did not need to tell me airplanes don't dip their nose to travel Earth. Earth is a level plane, so why would they? First, for the first computation, I just quickly used the parabola formula of 8 inches per mile squared, but it only holds true for a horizontal distance of just over 1,000 miles. Earth's radius is near four times that, hence the low 1,099 feet per second drop. You base your fighter jet speed off the supposed rotation of Earth at the equator, but only covered one radius distance in 12 hours. Are you suggesting Earth has a 48-hour day? I, too, based my calculation off Earth's supposed rotation, but unlike you, uh, here, I cover the entire diameter in 12 hours. Earth's supposed diameter. 7,926 miles times 5,280 feet per mile equals 41,849,280 feet times 12 inches per foot equals 502,191,306 inches in diameter. 86,400 seconds equals a 24-hour day. Divide that by 2 equals 42,200 seconds per day, per 12 hour, excuse me. You actually have to cover the diameter distance twice in 24 hours, once down, once back. That is why I cut the seconds per 24 hours into 12 hours for the 
foot per second drop. The actual drop per second is as follows. Take the 502,191,306 inch diameter, divide it by the 43,200 seconds per 12 hours equals, <clears throat> excuse me, 11,624.80 per second drop. Divide 12 inches per foot equals 968.73 feet per second drop. Divide by 5,280 feet per mile equals 0.18 miles per second drop. Earth's supposed diameter in centimeters, 1,276,273,885 divided by 43,200 seconds per 12 hours equals, ah, uh, you can have your metrics. Let's hear what he has to say. He said he used the 8 inches per mile squared formula, so let's try to do that. Now did I use that first? No. This lying idiot came back and gave me, responding to my word salad, an actual configuration here. That as well. The jet is traveling 1,036 miles per hour, which is 0 0.288 miles per second. So after one second of flight, the drop should be about half an inch. So how he came up with the 199 feet per second is beyond me, and I don't even get why he talks about feet per second. If the plane drops at a constant speed, it would follow a straight line and not a circle. Which it does, and that's why it don't drop, you fucking idiot. I then trick him to tell me how much drop there is after 12 hours of flight. You already told me how much what there was for 12 hours of flight, you doughhead. Man, I don't think you could pour piss out of a boot with the instructions on the hill. Right here, you told me the drop is 63... 171 kilometers per 12 hours and I already told you right here in 12 hours anyway so his next comment is I'm confused first you said the pilot is dropping 1099 feet per second now you say the pilot is dropping 968 feet per second which is it i respond to him mission control i know you are confused you think one day here on earth is 48 hours that is from self-inflicted dizziness thinking you live on a spinning ball is your reading comprehension less than that of a first grader copy and pasted from my previous comment for the first computation I just quickly used the parabola formula of 8 inches per mile squared but it only holds true for a horizontal distance of just over 1,000 miles Earth's radius is near four times that hence the low 199 foot per second drop fact the Earth is projected by science to have a radius of 3,963 feet, or miles, excuse me. Radius times 2 equals diameter times 5,280 5, feet per mile equals 41,849,280 feet in diameter. The arc length of 65,703,369.6 feet is irrelevant since we just need to drop straight through the diameter once in 12 hours. So take 60 seconds, multiply it by 60 minutes times 12 hours equals 43,200 seconds per 12 hours. 
Now take the distance in feet needed to be covered and divide that by the time 12 hours in seconds needed to cover that distance and you end up with how many feet per second you must cover. Distance 41,849,280 divided by time in seconds 43,200 equals 968.73 feet per second. You may want to take note when rounding decimals. Four and below rounds down, five and above rounds up. And this is where he, thank you, I already have enough material to do a video about me. You, be sure to watch it tomorrow. I have a screenshot of the whole thread, so don't bother deleting it. And while you're waiting for the dumb fuck premiere, please humor me with the calculation of the drop after 24 hours. Let me just make sure this is recording, folks. Yes, it is. Okay, now I've done this calculation, and I've done all of this here. This is... The calculations going from your 24,901 mile circumference divided by pi is 7,930 divided by 2 for radius is 39.65 which is that distance right there and then uh, to get one fourth of the circumference of 24,901 miles you divide it by Four, and you end up with this distance right here of 6,225 miles from 0 degrees to 90 degrees and you divide that by 1,039 miles per hour and you get your 5.99 hour travel time from here to here and then uh, you do all your other math and whatnot to go from there. I already explained that and I don't want to bore you. But this here is why the parabola formula is only good for 15 degrees, around 15 degrees or 1,000 miles. This here is an actual scale model my ruler comes in tenths of an inch, so I made this eight inches wide. Earth is just shy of 8,000 miles diameter. This circle is eight inches wide. All of these are very precision, as precise as you can get with this particular application. Starting with zero degrees, your first 15 degrees is just over 1,000 miles. As you can see, the black lines here are 1,000 miles, a five 100 mile marks are in yellow and 250 are in green. The arcs 15 degrees off center are right here in the purple 15 degrees, 30 degrees, 45 degrees, 60, 75, and 90. And you'll notice in your first 1,000 miles, the 15 degree arc is just outside just beyond 1,000 miles, where your 30 degree angle is now just inside of 2,000 miles. Your 45 degree drop is considerably inside of 3,000 miles. And then you have your 60 and 75 between the three and four thousand so you got two in there that's how much drop it changes and that's why the the parabola formula only works out to about a thousand miles to be correct because you can see it's almost a slope right there which the parabolic formula of eight inches per mile squared is actually a slope but the, it begins as a radius and then turns into a slope Here's my first drawing where I just had it in standard units of measurement, miles, feet, and inches. Here's your rate, your ring, uh, disc sitting inside of the ring. 
and since I decided to go as far as do his metric system I got that right here but let's move on to the video content and so he says in rem thanks I already have enough material now to do a video about you be sure to watch tomorrow I have a screenshot of the whole thread so don't bother deleting it and I will be waiting for your dumb fuck and while you're waiting for the dumb fuck premiere please humor me with the calculation of the drop after 24 hours and I started to respond that's when I lost power for six hours after all this and like I said this is on my absolute don't even make my bucket list I don't even care to interact with these idiots I don't even care to watch their shit but this bozo he just refuses to leave me alone as you can see in his comment right here four hours ago that's why I finally watched this shit and that's why I'm gonna post this my very last comment here live <clears throat> See, when I first started doing it, I wrote, I hope you do do, in parentheses, your brain, a video about me. But since that comment got wiped out when my power went out, here's the comment I'm replying to him. This is where you're going to see how ignorant this son of a bitch is. He is a wasted fucking space bag of hide ain't worth dealing with. But I'm going to go ahead and post this comment and try to get rid of him. I'm, I might even go so far as to watch his videos so I can just do videos about him for a while. Anyway, here's the comment I'm just about to post to him. You are welcome. I see you did do a video about me. Why would I delete my comments? They are fine. It is you who should have deleted your comments and math proved beyond a reasonable doubt that you are one double dumb motherfucker. If somebody else's conclusion on computation so vastly differs from your own, you should probably recheck your own work before trying to prove them wrong. Yes, 1039 miles per hour being equivalent to 464 meters per second is correct. From that point forward your calculations are completely fucked up i don't even use metrics and i know 0 0.0042 meters that's 42 thousandths of a meter is only <clears throat> 0 0.42 centimeters not the 4.2 centimeters you calculated so I didn't even bother checking to see if your equated drop of 4.2 centimeters per second was accurate also it is such a small rate of drop there was no need to check further I could tell just by reading your arrogant replies you are one completely fucked up in the head individual and will play the starring role in your dumb fuck premiere Excuse me. <clears throat> Excuse me. Before we get into your figures, I am going to try to make this simple just for you. Anybody with less than half a BB sized brain knows from what we were instructed to believe that the earth rotating at 1039 miles per hour is one complete rotation covering two diameters every 24 hours or one day half of that is half of a rotation or half of a day covering one diameter every 12 hours and one half of that is one quarter of one rotation or one quarter of a day covering one radius 
in six hours. <clears throat> According to you and your fucked up one cell brain, a jet flying an inverted loop of Earth's supposed circumference, 24,901 miles, traveling at Earth's supposed equatorial speed of 1,039 miles per hour, dipping its nose at 15 degrees per hour in your reality only covers one radius or one quarter of the earth or one quarter of a day in 12 hours. Not the one diameter, half of the earth or half a day. That of which is an observable fact to everybody rather as for idiot or a flurfer except for you of course laugh my fucking ass off I verbatim quote you the drop is 6371 kilometers per 12 hours also one radius of the earth that claim of yours in itself demonstrates your stupidity as it mandatorily dictates at that same speed you would need 36 more hours to complete that same loop. You obviously lack the common sense and reason necessary to mon mentally process reality. That is why I asked you twice in my last two comments, are you suggesting Earth has a 48 hour day? Okay now, on to the meat and potatoes. It is common knowledge to anybody with an IQ above 2, if you are living on a sphere you are at its highest point and no matter where you are, and if you move, and you are still at its highest point, so there would never be a drop rate, since elevation down is in, and elevation up is out. Setting all that nonsense aside, since you calculated how in the fuck it's beyond me, a drop of 4.2 centimeters per second, I went so far to prove your stupidity to you that I worked the numbers in metrics so even you might just possibly be able to see your own stupidity. It's hard to tell though. After all, you are just a spirit idiot and part of the woofy 60-20 pack and your head is so far up woofy 60-20's ass all you see is an occasional light hole in the inside of some of his teeth as he flaps his jaws. Oh yeah, in my previous comment, since you already proved your stupidity and you don't know shit about calculating an arc or anything else for that matter, and the arc is not necessary for the practical purpose of dropping one radius of Earth in 12 hours at the seven at the 40 4.2 centimeters per second drop rate you calculated being on a ball, <laughs> I eliminated it. The only variable affected by using arc length is the speed necessary to maintain the drop rate per second as you travel around the arc. You calculated 4.2 centimeters drop per second times 60 seconds per minute equals 250 two centimeters in parentheses 2.52 meters per minute is way less than the 15 meters per minute you calculated times 60 minutes per hour equals 15,120 centimeters point one five one two kilometers per hour not the 54 kilometers you calculated times 12 hours equals one hundred 
81,440 centimeters per 12 hours times point zero 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 one equals just one point eight one four four kilometer drop in 12 hours how in the fuck you ever got a total of 6,371 kilometers drop in 12 hours from a 4.2 centimeter drop per second is way beyond me. Unless, of course, you are part of the Common Core graduation class. Just for your information, at a drop rate of 4.2 centimeters per second, it will take 42 1181 hours 20 minutes and 6 seconds to drop the earth's radius of 637,742,958 centimeters to drop the earth's radius in 12 hours the drop rate must be 14,763.5 centimeters per second. Maybe you should pull your head out of Wolfie's ass and grab a fresh breath air. Maybe it will help you to see and think. Like I said, folks, this shit here from Sphere Idiots is not even on my bucket list. But with this guy heckling me, this dome-headed piece of garbage... I have to give this comment to him and I might even go so far as to see if he has the gall and check his intelligence. I'm just going to go ahead and refresh that and see if that comment posted. What, what is, is shape sense? I don't Same. care what this has to say. 22 replies, show more replies, and no, it didn't post, so I'm going to have to go ahead and uh, post that for him on the video. Anyway, with that said, folks, I'm going to go ahead and send him a link to this video I'm about to upload. You all have a good day. I hope you enjoyed watching Stupidity at its finest. Be well.